In this video, we present BERT, which is a language model introduced in the paper Pre-Training Deep Bidirectional Transformers for Language Understanding. Importantly, BERT demonstrated that transfer learning is a powerful tool also in natural language processing, and that it may be enough with very little fine-tuning to solve a new task. The basic idea in transfer learning is to first pre-train a model usually a large neural network on a large data set. After that, we fine-tune the network using a small data set for the specific task that we would like to solve. When it works, transfer learning makes a huge difference and enables us to solve new problems much more easily, since we can usually download pre-trained weights from the internet and that we no longer need a large data set for our specific task. Transfer learning became the default strategy in computer vision around 2014. People often used models that were pre-trained for image classification on ImageNet, which meant that they used supervised learning and a large annotated dataset to pre-train the model. For several years after that, people were unsuccessfully investigating ways to use transfer learning in natural language processing and they were trying to come up with tasks and datasets with the same appealing properties as ImageNet had for computer vision. Finally, in 2018, at least three different papers demonstrated that transfer learning can be used also in natural language processing. Among these, BERT was arguably the cleanest since it required the least amount of fine-tuning on the smaller dataset, and overall it also gave the best results. By the way, this figure shows how ELMO, one of the other methods, managed to outperform the earlier baselines on several different tasks. Interestingly, the pre-training strategies used in natural language processing are self-supervised, which means that they do not require us to annotate the data. The most common type of self-supervision in NLP is to predict the next word in the sequence. In that case, you feed the first n-1 words into the network and ask the network to predict the nth word in the sequence. The fact that we do not need to annotate the data is a huge advantage and enables us to crawl the internet and collect gigantic datasets that we can use to pre-train our models. More recently, self-supervised methods have demonstrated excellent performance also in the computer vision field. And some of those methods are actually heavily inspired by BERT. Before explaining how the self-supervised learning works, we will look at what BERT can do and its architecture. With a bit of fine-tuning, BERT can handle a range of different tasks. Many of these tasks are related to sentence or text classification. As a first example, we can do sentiment analysis and we can look at the sentence, but believe it or not, it's one of the most beautiful evocative works I've seen and figure out if it's a positive or a negative statement. BERT can also identify answers or documents that are relevant to a certain query, which is a very useful ability. And Google has been using BERT to improve their search engine. Here is one example from one of their blogs where they looked at the query, can you get medicine for someone pharmacy? Before BERT, the first result was a page about how to get your prescription filled. After introducing BERT, the search engine picks up on the importance of the words for someone in the query. And the first result is a page about the possibility for someone to pick up a prescription for a patient. The BERT architecture is based on the transformer encoder. This means that we first take the input sequence and create embeddings for each element in the sequence. These vectors are then fed into a sequence of capital N encoder blocks, where each block contains multi-head attention, add and normalize, a feed forward layer, and an add and normalize layer. The original paper presented two versions of the BERT architecture called BERT base and BERT large. BERT base is smaller and contains N equal 12 encoder blocks. The vector embeddings are D equal 768 elements long. The multi-head self-attention contains H equal 12 heads and the entire network contains roughly 110 million parameters. 
Bert Large uses more layers, longer vectors, and more heads, and contains roughly 340 million parameters. Compared to, say, a translation setting, the input to BERT is slightly different. To start with, during training, the input sequence contains two different subsequences. For instance, in this example, the first subsequence contains the sentence, My cat is great, whereas the second subsequence contains the sentence, She loves food. These subsequences could be several sentences long, but for simplicity, I will simply refer to them as sentence A and sentence B. The sentences are separated by a separation token, SEP, and there is a second SEP at the end of the entire sequence. And these tokens are included to clarify where the two sequences start and end. Also, the input sequence always starts with a classification token, CLS, which is included as a tool to help us perform classification. That is, for all the other tokens in the input, we will try to compute more informative embeddings of that token, where the context is taken into account. For the CLS token, the objective is instead to obtain an embedding that summarizes the entire sequence, such that we can use it to perform classification on the sequence. You may recall that the original transformer architecture adds a position embedding to the token embedding. Here, the token embedding describes the word itself. For instance, the word my has one vector, e my, cat has one vector, e cat, and is has one vector, e is. The position embedding instead specifies where the word is located in the sequence. For instance, since great is the fifth word in the sequence, we add an embedding e5 to the vector e great. In BERT, we introduce a third embedding that indicates if the token belongs to the first or the second sentence. In our example, we add a vector ea to the embeddings of the words in sentence A and eb to the embeddings of the words in sentence B. The sentence embeddings help the network understand which sentence the word belongs to which is useful for many of the classification tasks that we want to solve. To obtain the final input embedding, we simply add the token, position and sentence embeddings. For instance, to obtain the input vector for the word great, we add e great, e5 and ea. And to obtain the word embedding for food, we add e food, e9 and eb. This concludes the description of how BERT is constructed and we are now ready to explain how it's trained. BERT is pre-trained using two different tasks. The first task is constructed by randomly masking out 15% of the input words and then asking the network to predict the word that was masked out. In our example, the word is is replaced by the mask token before giving the sequence to BERT. To guess the word that was masked out, we then use the output at the masked word's position. For instance, in this example, we use the fourth output since the fourth word was masked. That vector is then fed into a single layer feed forward neural network with a softmax activation from which we obtain the probabilities of different words. In this case, the network thought is was the most probable which is good since that was the word that we masked out. A minor technical detail is that the mask tokens are only present during training, which creates a slight mismatch between training and test data. In an attempt to reduce that mismatch, the authors actually only replaced the selected words with a mask token 80% of the time. With 10% probability, they instead replaced it with a random word and with 10% probability, they kept the original word. The second pre-training task is to predict if the two sentences follow after each other in the original document. This is a binary classification problem that we try to solve by connecting a single layer feedforward neural network and a softmax to the output for the CLS token. This is how we encourage the output for the CLS token to summarize the content of the entire input sequence. 
In our example, the network thinks that there is an 80% probability that she loves food, follows after, my cat is great. To construct the input sequence during training, we first select sentence A from our corpus, say, my cat is great. With 50% probability, we then select sentence B to whatever sentence that follows after sentence A in our corpus. If she loves food is the next sentence, the true label for this pair is is next. With 50% probability, we instead select sentence B to be some other sentence in our corpus, say, who is Kaiser Sosa? And the true label is then not next. In spite of its simplicity, this pre-training task helps BERT learn embeddings that summarize the entire sequence and that are very useful for sequence classification. To fine-tune BERT, we generally first collect an annotated dataset for the specific task that we would like to solve. For sequence level classification tasks, for instance, if we want to classify if a text is positive or negative, we can feed the output from the CLS token into a single layer feed forward network with a softmax activation. That is, we multiply the output vector Y1 with a matrix W and add a bias B and then feed the result into a softmax activation. This gives the probabilities of the different classes and we fine tune the network by minimizing the cross entropy loss on our annotated dataset using standard tools for supervised learning. Note that the only new parameters are a scalar B and a matrix W and the number of new parameters that we introduce is very small compared to the number of parameters in the transformer encoder. Not surprisingly, fine-tuning BERT tends to be very fast in comparison to the pre-training step. Here are some results from the original paper where BERT was compared to other models on the GLUE benchmark. The GLUE benchmark contains nine different tasks and eight of them are included in the table. For instance, QQP stands for the Quora question pairs, where the task is to determine if two questions are semantically equivalent. QNLI is the Stanford Question Answering Dataset, where we have to determine if a sentence answers a given question. And COLA stands for the Corpus of Linguistic Acceptability, where we seek to determine if a sentence is grammatical. All these tasks are examples of sequence level classification and can be solved by fine-tuning BERT as described above. As indicated by the table, BERT obtained state-of-the-art results on all the different tasks when the paper was published. To conclude, BERT is a language model which is pre-trained in a self-supervised manner, which means that we do not need any annotations to train the network. BERT clearly demonstrated that transfer learning also works for natural language processing, that it requires very little fine-tuning and that we can obtain good performance with a limited amount of annotated data. BERT is also quite general and can be used on many different tasks and is therefore of great practical importance. Finally, BERT has been highly influential and has inspired many other papers, including many contributions beyond NLP.